Are you in a mood to speak loud or you need to? I'd rather you speak loudly. Okay. <laughs> um, hello, my name is John Swanson. I will be presenting on the correlation between eigenstates as the magnetic field is changed. Um, so getting into that, um, just brief overview, not that people don't know what superconductors are, but a uh, superconductor is a material which can move electrons from one atom to the next with no resistance. And so this is often researched on low temperatures, bringing metals down to low temperatures, they can become superconductors in many cases. Um, but one area of research that maybe isn't as looked into or known about is the application of magnetic fields um, to form superconductors and metals. Because I know metals oftentimes, when they're superconductors, give off magnetic fields, but inducing them with a magnetic field may have um, a similar result to bringing it to lower temperatures if we look into that a bit. So, some basic methods of research. Um, there's a MATLAB code that was used to do this experimentation. I'll get a little bit into what was behind that. And so, through this, we um, took the eigenstates that were found through this code and they were converted to density of states um, across energy. And then that was used to determine if a superconductor could be formed based on how the density of states um, reacted. And so some equations that were helpful in doing this. Um, this first equation relates the Hamiltonian to energy in the eigenstates. Um, and a lot of these are really intertwined. So actually doing this computationally may be incredibly challenging, which is why a code was used, because I'm not sure I could do any of this by hand. Um, second one equation right here, we found, um, use the energy found in the first equation um, and use in the first equation to find the density of states. And then moving past that, this equation is used alongside this once this is solved and it can be plugged back in, as you can see here. And then this is just an equation for the Hamiltonian with L sub Z being angular momentum, V sub Z being um, magnetic field, and both of these are actually in the um, momentum um, space and not in any position. position. Yes. Thank you. What is LU and H L? Okay, so LU is the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, highest occupied, and so for this one, lowest is um, calculated using positive, highest using negative. So. And so a little bit of a representation of this last code here. Um, this is this cone is kind of what that equation looks like when mapped out in again in the momentum space. And this ky and kx are represented as px and py here. Um, and so the top is the lowest unoccupied, bottom is the highest occupied, um, corresponding to positive and negative. And then this over here is a material that this could be. Um, researched upon. So this is the uh, this is a lot <coughs> of layered on bismuth telluride and it's just one of the um, lattices of that. And so this is something that the experimentation done could be done upon. Okay, so for the actual data, um, at the bottom here the areas are the eigenstates um, across energy that were found through the experimentation. And above each of these um, is a corresponding density of states that were found um, when converted. So these first three, this is throughout the slides I'll show. This is as the magnetic field increases. And these first three are pretty similar. As you can see, this is the density of states um, of the poles when there weren't electrons in the uh, lattice and then of the electrons found. And the dotted line you'll see is the combination of the two of those. So nothing really too interesting here. Um, as the magnetic field is increased even more, um, it was starting to see that there was a bit of a dip here, which started to grow, as you can see in that last one, almost forming a peak. Um, and then finally, um, here we can see this is the strongest peak that was found through this experimentation. I'm sure it could be found stronger if you were to get to it closer values, but this is what was found. Um, and then it started to dip down. And so what was determined from seeing this peak in the density of states is that it is evidence for a superconductor. Um, I believe you can look at, look at Fermi's golden rule for showing that when the density of states increases at a specific energy, 
um, so sharply it could indicate that a superconductor is being formed. And so, again, it, it flattens out afterwards, but that is, as a magnetic field is increased, that is something that is known to happen for density of states. So that doesn't prove this is true, but it gives further evidence that this is reliable. Um, and so this is just a video of all of those kind of mapped out, kind of what that would look like. Just for a little bit of a better visualization of the density of states over time. Okay, so some observations that could be made here. Again, by Fermi's golden rule, um, we can claim that as density of states increase at one specific energy, that um, we could maybe see a superconductor being formed. And so, um, further indication of this was found when looking at the eigenstates of the found through this experimentation. And so I'm not going to show all of them because there's a lot, but um, I picked a specific few. So when the B field is zero, uh, I believe this is the first eigenstate and the third one, um, according to our graphs on an earlier slide. Um, there's relatively little to see here, which indicates there's little motion. And so as we move up in the magnetic field, this should be um, negative 2.33 times 10 to negative 5. Um, there is a lot more fringes here, as seen by the second eigenstate and the fifth one, so I believe these two are, and the fringes should indicate that there's further motion within these eigenstates, and that continues up to um, negative four times ten to the negative five, um, and this is at a much higher energy and a much lower energy, but as you can see, there is a lot of um, activity going on there further indicates that there is motion, which would lead you to believe that maybe a superconductor could be formed under these conditions. A second. So yes. this is just different eigenstates at the same um, uh, at the same magnetic field, right? You no, fix no. the strength, so, you, so are you changing it? This this is magnetic field is zero. This is increased to 2.33 times seven. Which is kind of optimal, where you really see yeah. the formation. Of the and then the, the largest peak was seen at this one. Um, and so this is at a higher energy, but this is as the magnetic field is increased. This is just a couple of the eigenstates taken out of that. And so observations, again, I said as the fringes increase, that we just believe that there's an increase in motion. Um, and there are the eigenstates, and my units are not quite great, but they're there. Can't change them now. Um, and so. Basically, what I took out of this is upon induction of a magnetic field, it could lead us to believe that a superconductor could be formed under the right conditions, which I think is something that's very interesting. So, thank you. Questions? Yes. Sorry, I'm going to